So I sit down and I have a real conversation with them. Like, what is the root cause of your stress? Go out on a walk, exercise for five minutes, get your body moving. Um, supplement, are you taking supplement? Are you taking magnesium? Have you had blood work in the past uh, year? We talk beyond teeth because if I fix the teeth and the cracks and the fraction and I clean up their gum and, and their gum disease, it's gonna come right back mm. if that root cause is not gone. Can, uh, can a woman during pregnancy, can her teeth shift? Absolutely. So when we're pregnant, we produce lots of hormones, as you know. Um, and one of the main hormones that we produce towards the end of our pregnancy to loosen up our ligaments to get ready for childbirth is called relaxin. So this hormone relaxin stimulates the ligaments to loosen up and around each tooth that we, we have in our mouth, it's housed in a periodontal ligament. Mm. So hormones don't discriminate and we have these ligaments around our teeth and those ligaments are also, they have the relaxin receptor. So my mother-in-law has had four consecutive pregnancies and she told me with each pregnancy, one side of her mouth shifted wow. and it's because of the relaxin. So, uh, and a lot of women, I see a lot of pregnant women and especially with after your second or third pregnancy, you start seeing that shift of your teeth. So, and it's attributed to the hormone. Which is fascinating because yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of women watching who say, okay, no, I actually was pregnant and I noticed maybe this tooth or these teeth or these part of my mouth shift a little, a little bit. Yeah. And that's really the root cause of what's happening. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So then naturally, is there a way to prevent that from happening? Is there anything we can do? Of course. So it's really important if you're trying to conceive as a woman or you are pregnant to visit your dentist. So it's an old myth where you say, don't go to the dentist during your pregnancy. That's dangerous. Totally. It's actually highly recommended. Um, and before is ideal so you can take care of your dental issues and say you've had orthodontic treatment in the past and you've lost your retainer. That happened to my patient a couple of days ago. She's like, oh, I lost my retainer and then now my teeth are shifting with it's her third pregnancy. And I'm like, we need to make you a new retainer so they don't shift. And then if you want to fix your teeth after you're done giving birth, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to make a retainer so to keep your, your teeth in place before mm -hmm. you get pregnant. And also, there's one thing I want to add to that. So relaxin, the hormone, is the biggest component of it. But when a woman gives birth and she's pregnant, a lot of changes happen in her body. Her sleep shifts. Her mind shifts. I mean, I, I've had two kids and it has, <laughs> it takes a number on your mental health mm. and the quality of your sleep and birth can be traumatic. So there's a stress component as well. And when we're stressed, we grind our teeth, we clench. And that adds insult to injury, where relaxin loosens up the ligaments, you're clenching and grinding, mm -hmm. and that just starts, that, that, that accentuates the movement process. So mm. I think if you're stressed out as a woman, if, if you're not sleeping well, go figure out why. Um, get that retainer, get that night guard if that's what you need mm. to protect your teeth, because a guard will protect your teeth from moving as well. Mm. So depending on your situation, we'd see, do you need a guard? Do you need a retainer? Mm. What do you need? How many of you out there are clenching? So many of us clench. Oh my God. I know that when I'm stressed, <laughs> I'm clenching, maybe magnesium helps, but I feel it in yes. the morning, my jaw is tight. Mm -hmm. Actually, even when I'm not sleeping, like I'm on the computer, I feel my jaw <laughs> clenching and I was like, oh, my teeth are kind of hurting. It's, sometimes it's subconscious, but I can totally see that. You mentioned about the role of stress. What does cortisol do to our oral health? Cortisol weakens in a nutshell. Cortisol weakens the crystalline structure of our teeth and increases inflammation in our gums. Mm. So if you're prone to gum disease, it's just going to get so much worse. Um, if your teeth, if you're not supplementing well and you're not eating a great diet and doing your bone broth and not taking your magnesium, your K2, your mm. D3, you're deficient. And almost everybody's deficient in D3, yeah. like 90% of the population. Um, you're going to be more prone to getting cavities because cortisol will weaken the, the it'll make your teeth more prone to demineralization. Mm. And how many of us are persistently stressed and then wondering maybe why, okay, another cavity for another year? Yeah. And uh, men, much of this is attributed, you're saying, to cortisol just breaking down that structure of holding what is the matrix of our tooth yeah. holding it together. Yeah. And um, what are some of the things then you tell your patients 
okay, this is really important. Let's see, look at your oral health. You say you're persistently stressed. What are some of the things that you're recommending? So um, before I even touch their teeth, like when I do my exam, the last thing I look at is their teeth. I talk about their diet, their lifestyle, what's stressing them out, what can they control, what can they not control. So it goes in depth a lot, and I refer a lot of them to you to heal yeah. thyself. I, I love the, the, the healing work that you're mm -hmm. doing in therapy, psychedelic, whatever their calling is, but they need to rid themselves of the chronic stress because it's gonna end up in disease. Mm. And it's disease that nobody wants in their body. So I sit down and I have a real conversation with them. Like, what is the root cause of your stress? Like, for me, I needed to hire more help with my kids. Like, that helped me out. It, just something small. Or go out on a walk, exercise for five minutes, get your body moving. Um, supplement, are you taking a supplement? Are you taking magnesium? Have you had blood work in the past uh, year? Uh, do you have a functional doc or naturopath? Mm -hmm. So we talk beyond teeth because if I fix the teeth and the cracks and the fraction and I clean up their gum and, and their gum disease, it's gonna come right back mm. if that root cause is not gone. Mm. So if they're eating bad and they're mouth breathing and, and, and they're like in chronic stress, my work is not going to last, and I don't want to do that. No. I don't like to re redo my work. Right. <laughs> I'd like my work to last. Right, right. So, and that's what I tell them super honestly. And, you know, there no other dentist has talked to us about stress, but it's so important. Like, why are you clenching? Do you have parasites? Um, are you, uh, what kind of relationship are you in? Mm -hmm. um, what's your day-to-day -day lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Are you taking on too much work? Um, do you need to meditate? So things like that. Mm. And interesting, we think about stress hormones in the body. I mean, there's no prioritization to really uh, eat food or break down food. So we're not making as much saliva. And saliva is essential for our oral health, right? Oh my God. It's the first, like, it's the first... Immunity is in your saliva. Lubrication of your mouth is in your saliva. If you don't have saliva, you're going to get cavities. You're going to get bad breath. You're more prone to tonsil stones, which are really difficult to deal with, and they cause really bad breath. So saliva is so, so, so important. And with children, um, I want to touch base on something with children. They're not sleeping well. They have, um, a lot of them are mouth breathing. Mm -hmm and then they start having behavioral issues during the day. And then they put them on medications like Adderall and antidepressants. I just saw a child two weeks, in my, in my, uh, two weeks ago, and their mouth is dry. And then Accutane for, 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 for acne. And it dries up their body, it dries up their mouth, and bam, cavities start happening. And it's, it's, it's really tragic mm -hmm. because it's all preventable with the right knowledge and awareness. Yeah, knowledge and awareness is the big thing because a lot of parents, or us before we're parents, don't get the education about, okay, these are foods that are gonna be really helpful for your child's overall health, their hormones, their oral health. Hey everyone, I wanna talk about Birch Living. It's a partner I've been working with for quite some time now. You know, sleep is so important to me, it's a top pillar of health, and I'm always excited to talk about Birch on the show. Now, it's a premium mattress in the box company, and it makes mattresses and sleep products that are stylish, comfortable, and environmentally conscious. They have an organic, non-toxic mattress. It's made right here in the United States. And it's important for me to know that I'm sleeping on a mattress, a surface, that is not off-gassing volatile organic compounds. Now, Birch has the gold standard label for beds, Green Guard Gold certified. And what this is showing is that it's been tested for over 3,000 different volatile organic compounds, these chemicals that we breathe in that affect the respiratory system, nervous, the brain, the immune. So for Birch, with this certification, you can sleep without worrying, knowing that it's affecting your health detrimentally. What I love most about my Birch mattress, and I've had it for about a year, is it's breathable, I feel good at night, I don't sweat, it relieves pressure points, it's allergen and mildew resistant, I ain't worried about mold, and the raw materials are coming straight from nature. So with Birch, you're gonna get a 100 night sleep trial with a 25 year warranty. So if it makes you nervous to buy one and you haven't tried it, you get more than three months to make sure you love it. And if you don't, they're gonna come pick it up from you for a full refund. The best part of it is that Birch delivers right to your door 
in a box free within the United States. It comes rolled up and super easy for you to unpack. So I love my Birch mattress. I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash heal thyself. You're gonna get $400 off your mattress and two free pillows. Did you know that 75 to 90% of all doctor's visits are stress-related? Now, many of us are operating in survival mode. I know what you know what it feels like, and we expect our skin and our bodies and our minds to really thrive when our body is running on empty, it's running on fumes. So to change this reality, I love this new purpose-led California-based CBD brand, Prima. They're dedicated to helping you rise above modern day stress, so every day is a little bit better for you. They have doctor formulated, clinically validated, high performance products for your skin, body, and mind. If you're not sure where to start, I want you to try Prima's daily CBD capsules. It's helpful in relieving stress. Or if you need a full restful night's sleep without waking up groggy or sleepy the next morning, go with the Sleep Tight. It's gonna help you the night before get into your body, relax and waking up restored and rejuvenated. They also have a wonderful skincare line. I have every one of those products. They're right in my cabinet in the bathroom and I use it every other day in my cycle of beauty routines. And I love, love Prima because they're super clean, non-toxic. So Lucky Frost Prima is offering our listeners an exclusive limited time 20% offer with the code Heal Thyself. Head to prima.co with the code Heal Thyself to receive that limited time 20% off and get the relief you deserve so you can feel better every single day. Mouth breathing is something that was fascinating to me because I didn't even mouth tape until like three years ago. And I was having one cavity a year or every year and a half since I was a kid. And I told you I had 20 amalgam fillings. I think that was when I was a kid. Uh, I, went to, I was at the dentist twice a year and I was getting, ca- it was expected to get a cavity filled. Uh, I think that was more attributed towards the diet and all the candy I used to eat and sneak and I used to rebel against my mom. She goes, go brush your teeth. I go, okay. And I close the door and I just sat on the toilet oh. <laughs> saying like, and I'm then coming sure. out and be like, mm, I brushed my teeth, you know, like thinking that I had gotten one over on her. But you know how kids can be. Of course. But uh, as, as an adult though, my diet got better. I was eating all the like really good uh, probiotic rich foods and I was still getting them. And then it really wasn't until I just put a piece of tape over my mouth and went to sleep that I was waking up with less dark spots under my eyes, uh, less bloating in my stomach, and then I just never got cavities again. It's been like three and a half, four years, and I was like, what? How often are you seeing uh, children and adults mouth breathing? All the time. I'd say 80% of my patients are mouth breathing. And, And it's truly... Um, so I'm always posting. I, I put my mouth tape on at night, and and people are like, "What?" Like it's it's. But you need to keep your saliva in check. You need to be breathing through your nose through nitrous oxide to create nitrous oxide to filter out the air that we're breathing. Um, so your brain gets oxygenated properly, and these children's brain gets oxygenated. So I work with a lot of parents to help um, train their kids to have them not mouth breathe. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you always see these pictures. Side note, like, I was watching Frozen with my daughters the other day, and they pictured Elsa and Anna sleeping, and both of them had their mouth open, Mm. and they were drooling and, like, kind of snoring. And I'm like, no! (laughs) Put some mouth tape (laughs) on them. It's like we're seeing it even... It's normalized. It's normalized. We're seeing it in our cartoons that, oh, you just mouth breathe, and, Mm -hmm. you know, saliva drops out, and, like, oh, it's cute for a baby. Mm -hmm. It's detrimental for a baby. So when my my child, she's two, when I see her mouth breathing, I go in, I gently close her mouth. Mm -hmm. I I support her with her lovey to close her mouth, and over time, she learns that. Um, We do exercises like... Our mm-hmm. tongue position is not being trained to our, and people don't know. Mothers, I didn't learn this in dental school. I learned this in the past like five to mm-hmm. six years because mm-hmm. I needed to dig in further because of something that happened to my child. So um, my functional therapy is really good to get your tongue in the proper position. You want your tongue to be forward and up. 
so that it opens up the airway. Mm. So proper tongue position isn't only important for airway, but it's also important for palate development in children because mm. your tongue is one of the strongest muscles in your body. So it all goes hand in hand, tongue position, mouth breathing, and formation of the oral cavity in children with regards to food and breastfeeding and all that. But mm. mouth breathing is very, very, very prevalent amongst children and adults. Mm. Powerful because when I was brought to my attention, if, where is your tongue position? It's never on the roof of my yeah. mouth. I don't think it ever was. Yeah. And then I try to put the tongue on the roof of my mouth and my arch is too small for my tongue. Well, there so, you go. So I was yeah. like, wow, I guess it just developed. I mean, I guess maybe my arch is supposed to be wider than it is. But then I went to actually the Breathe Institute. I, I know you're yeah. familiar with them. And uh, they took uh, an x-ray right. and then they assessed my tongue and, and my mouth. And they said, oh, your tongue is just weak. And I was like, I talk for a living. What do you mean my tongue is weak? <laughs> all I do is talk all day. Ask my partner. I go home and I, stop, I don't stop talking until I go to bed. And um, I, I, for the first time ever, I was doing these tongue exercises. And it was fascinating to me because what I found was that, and even with mouth tape, sometimes my tongue would slip back and I'd find myself kind of like choking mm -hmm. and waking up, yeah. you know, in a panic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of it. Sometimes I'm like <laughs> waking up, like ripping off my mouth tape and I can't breathe and my mustache hair is on it. <laughs> and and uh, it, what I found was that as, as I strengthened my tongue, the more it was able to hold and tone itself away from my airway, and then I was getting deeper sleep. So those exercises, and I was doing just like five a day. It took like 10 minutes a day. Sometimes I would do it when I'm driving. Yeah. People would pull up next to me and I'm moving my tongue around <laughs> crazy ways and they're seeing that. But it really works. It totally. really, really works. So I'm glad you really mentioned that. Um, do you give some of your patients these exercises to do? I give them exercises and I give them mouth tape. Oh, fantastic. Both. So it's, uh, and people with more severe, I, I like to, um, refer to my functional therapist. So they mm. just focus on that. Um, mm. um, but these tongue exercises really help. And it's just awareness to the mom. And as soon as, or the father, or mm -hmm. the caretaker. But it's, when people know, they start doing it. It's just, you know, they're, people are pretty open. Some people are scared of mouth tape. They're like, but what if we suffocate? You won't suffocate. Look at you. You woke up in a panic and you ripped it off. I ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> so now our bodies know what to do. And if something is wrong, your body will react and rip it off. It, it's kind of funny. This morning I woke up, and this doesn't happen often, but this morning I woke up, my mouth tape was on the floor, and my retainer was both my top and bottom. Were, I just took them off, and I don't even remember. So I woke up this morning, I was like, where is everything in my mouth? <laughs> but, um, so it's like you will do, if your body's uncomfortable in that moment, it will, it will happen. But um, we, we, we mentioned something before the mouth tape, and that was cavities. And I, I had mentioned I had all these amalgam fillings. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the, the past uh, recommendations to use amalgam? How do you believe they've affected people? Um, and how do you practice filling cavities? Yeah, yeah, great question. So amalgam fillings are 50% mercury and an alloy of a bunch of other elements. Um, mercury is one of the most toxic things known to man. The, the great thing about amalgam fillings is that before they, they're like, oh, it's a very strong material, it's going to last a very long time. It does, because it's a metal. When it dries up, it's a metal. But you have to remove a lot more tooth structure to put in a mercury filling, uh, an amalgam filling. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's just not, it's not a wholesome filling to be. It, it's just a few years ago, the FDA was like, okay, maybe we shouldn't be approving these for people's right. mouths. Like, I don't know how many years of... They were a group of people that were fighting against amalgam fillings. So I definitely, obviously, I've been trained in amalgam, like in school, okay. as you know, okay. they train you in amalgam fillings, but um, they don't look good. They don't, uh, they, they, they work, but they're very toxic, especially mm. as they start breaking down and especially when they're removed unsafely. So you had 20, hopefully you got them removed mm -hmm. safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you did. And uh, what is safe amalgam? Safe is for you not to inhale it and not to swallow it as a patient as a and a practitioner in a nutshell. So it's so important to uh, protect your body with something called a rubber dam that a dentist places that only isolates that tooth that's mercury filled and you cut it up in a chunking technique so you get less aerosol so pieces of the amalgam fly out instead mm -hmm. of aerosol. Patient has oxygen on their nose 
Um, we, we cover our patient's head just so that their hair doesn't pick up anything. And there's a huge vacuum right next to their mouth. And of course, all the suctions and the high-speed suctions that my assistant does. So super important to have all that. And then I refer them to naturopathic doctors for detox, mm -hmm. cell core, like binders. Mm -hmm. I love Cellcor products for binders. Quicksilver, they have a whole mm -hmm. um, a detox mm -hmm. protocol. And then what do I fill it with? So there's two types of material to fill with. There's composite material, which is a white filling. And I use that for smaller fillings. Um, I don't like you because it's a it's like a plastic material. It's not made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we use a BPA-free uh, composite material, and we also use porcelain. And I like porcelain the most because it's most biomimetic and it's most similar to our natural crystal the structure mm -hmm. of our teeth. So it looks like our teeth, it functions like our teeth, and it feels like our teeth. Um, so I do porcelain onlays or inlays versus mm -hmm. crowns. I rarely do crowns in my office, and that's because it's really aggressive to tooth structure. Mm. Yeah. Really holding the integrity of the tooth structure is essential. Exactly. You're saying, but it's really, to me, our second show ever, and this was like 169 shows ago, um, was on amalgam fillings. Oh, wow. And it was really just like where we were with amalgam fillings and where we are. And yeah, the fact of the matter is, is that they do vaporize. We breathe them in consistently, especially with uh, different influences of hot and cold, for example. Exactly. Uh, so the removal, it's funny, you were saying the removal, you brought me back to like 2015, <laughs> where I was like, oh yeah, that's ex oh yeah, that's exactly how it was. We had the pipe coming out. I had the oxygen in my nose. Yeah. And it was like, I, I visualized the whole thing. So I'm really happy that you're doing it safely. And you already answered my second question. What is the, what do you refill it with? Or what do you fill it with? Um, so porcelain is a, is a really powerful one. And we often hear that the average adult should get seven to nine hours of sleep every night. And for a lot of us, it's not possible. More and more people are forced to make lifestyle changes just to get better sleep or even deeper sleep. Now, the first half of the night, that's your deep sleep window. That's when things start to drop. Your heart rate, your breathing, your blood pressure, muscle activity, and your body temperature. Now, since that temperature drop is crucial, it's a crucial aspect of deep sleep, finding a way to activate that sleep switch can help increase your deep levels of sleep. This is where Chili Sleep comes in. Chili Sleep makes customizable, climate-controlled sleep solutions that help improve your entire well-being. Chili Sleep makes the new Doc Pro, the Uller, and the Cube Sleep systems. These are hydro-powered, temperature-controlled mattress toppers that fit over your existing mattress to provide the ideal sleep temperature. Now, these mattress pads keep your bed at the perfect temperature for deep sleep. So whether you run hot or run cold, these sleep systems are designed to help you fall asleep. And not only that, stay asleep and give you the confidence and energy to power through your day. So imagine waking up not feeling tired, which is a pipe dream for a lot of us, but it's there for you. Chili Sleep can help make that happen. So for all the Heal Thyself listeners, I want you to go visit the link below and use the code DRG15. You're gonna get 15% off of the new Doc Pro sleep system and DRG30, you're gonna get 30% off of a full Uller, Cube, or the Chili Blanket sleep system. These offers are available exclusively to y'all, my favorite Heal Thyself listeners. Super Mush is the world's best superfood mouse spray. They created the easiest and most effective way to get your daily dose of energy, immunity, and just chill vibes. Now, mouse sprays are one of the most effective ways to ingest supplements overall. They have the fastest absorption rates, so you start to feel effects immediately. For when you need that extra energy, the Daily Energy Mouse Spray is formulated with cordyceps, lion's mane, rhodiola, green tea for smooth, clean burst of energy. It's a great replacement for caffeine, which we're so dependent on. So you can do four to eight sprays instead of coffee before you go to the gym, if you're about to go out, or when you're working late. For when you need to relax, which is the one I use a lot of, the Daily Chill Mouse Spray is formulated with ashwagandha, reishi, lion's mane, and lavender. And that's to reduce your stress, to help you get a restful sleep. And the flavor is hibiscus. So it's a great sleep aid to really help you get into your body so you can get a nice, restful night's sleep. So the way that I do it is four to eight sprays before bed, 
Or if I know that I'm taking a flight or even a yoga class or have a stressful day coming, it's really helpful. Now, when you need an extra boost to your immune system, this is the Daily Immunity Mouse Spray. It's formulated with turkey tail, reishi, ginger, and vanilla. And this is to help protect your cells and keep your immune system strong. It's got a very unique cinnamon toast flavor. So it reminds me of those days when I was eating Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And it's a great replacement for something like emergency. You can use four to eight sprays in the morning, before an event, or if you're just really feeling sick overall. You can use these daily to optimize your health. They're small, they're portable, they're easy to take. So right now you're gonna get 15% off of your order at supermush.com with the code Heal Thyself, one word. Now when it comes to taking, all right, let's say we have the filling and everything, we go home. Toothpaste people ask me about all the time. Is there a particular toothpaste that you like? Is there um, a reason you like it more than others? Because I grew up using Crest flavor, you know, with all like, you know, baseball player in the front and the <laughs> red and white and blue stripes. And I was like, wow, my mouth feels so fresh and sudsy. Um, and then some of these natural ones out there I use and there's no sudsy, it doesn't feel fresh. It kind of just feels like I, I have like a water-based smudge on my mouth that I just spit out and it kind of feels like I did before. Is there anyone that you really, really recommend to your patients? That is such a great question. Um, so I don't like the Crest and the Colgates. They're filled with materials I wouldn't want in my body, mm -hmm. specifically fluoride, okay? The very natural toothpaste, like you said, it's like brushing with nothing. Mm -hmm. There is one material, one component that should be in every toothpaste to help with remineralization, and that's called hydroxyapatite. So they've been using it in Japan for over 40 years, tons of research behind it, and it's a replacement for fluoride. So a lot of people are like, they come into my office, some people are like, oh, we don't want any fluoride in our toothpaste, and some are like, I don't feel clean without the fluoride. They need the fluoride. And that's because the fluoride is helping with remineralization. It's making your teeth stronger. Um, <clears throat> Hydroxyapatite does that. So the very natural toothpaste, like as if you're brushing with coconut oil, you might as well brush with coconut oil, right. you know? Um, that's not doing that. It's, it's, it's cleansing a little bit, but it's not helping you remineralize. So I love hydroxyapatite. And I'm, I know a dentist that's working on a paste, a, a, a very good hydroxyapatite filled paste. Right now I'm referring patients to buy Boca, Risewell Bite. They all have hydroxyapatite based toothpastes. Um, I do get feedback that it's not foamy enough. It's not foamy it's not enough. enough. I use all three. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're not foamy it's enough. Not, they're not foamy enough. Bite foams quite, the, the, a little the bit palette's better. a little bit better, but yeah, we're still working on creating that perfect toothpaste, but um, that's why I get into, let's talk about diet and mouth breathing. The five, so I have five pillars of oral health and hygiene is one of them. And it's what we do at home, the toothpaste and, um, and brushing and flossing and oil pulling and all that. But there isn't one that I have found that has that beautiful foam that leaves you super duper clean and it's clean ingredients, so. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I'm being very honest about them. For sure, but, for yeah. sure. I, and and I, I'm so happy to have them because I, I'm sure that they're a big part of also the reason why I've held the integrity of my teeth and not got a cavity every other year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting for the sudsy one to meet just to fresh. Just a tip with the Risewell and the Boca, because it's such a safe toothpaste, you can leave it on your teeth overnight. So when patients yeah. um, have small cavities and I want to remineralize that small cavity, because I don't like to fill every single cavity mm -hmm. I see. Some we can remineralize, and we've been very successful with ozone and my remineralization protocol. One key thing of it is brush really thoroughly for two minutes, spit out, no more rinsing. Don't uh. rinse. Okay? And if you're feeling a little extra, floss to get in the hydro to get the hydroxy appetite in between your teeth mm -hmm. and just put your mouth tape on and go to bed. And that really helps with generalized sensitivity. I had generalized sensitivity postpartum, baby yeah. number two. That helped me. It took me about a month to get rid of my sensitivity. And I was using that every single night. Mm. And it helps remineralize really small cavities. That's a really neat hack right there because yeah. sometimes I will get sensitivity on my tooth. So, And I've had people talk about, I do get tooth sensitivity. So mm -hmm. you're saying just brush, leave it on, don't rinse one last time, yeah. floss a little bit, mouth tape. Yes. It, you mentioned something. 
then can you reverse a cavity? Is it reversible without getting it filled? So you're, you're familiar with dental anatomy. Let's mm -hmm. just, so our teeth have three layers. You have your enamel, you have your dentin, and then you have your nerve, lymph, and blood supply to the, to the tooth. If the cavity is within the outer layer, the enamel, you can reverse it. Okay, you can reverse it with, so people who, so my five pillars for, for dental health. So it's hygiene at home, finding a dental home, a dentist you trust, you feel good with, that you look forward to seeing. I think that's a big comp component of psychological well-being for our patients. Diet, supplementation, and habits like mouth breathing. So those, it, those need to all be under control for optimal oral health. So you can't be mouth breathing and eating a sugary diet and not just sugar, like white bread, rice, mm -hmm. um, having a fear of the dentist. That's a perfect storm for you to get not one cavity a year, but many cavities a year. Right. So, um, so if we're brushing with hydroxyapatite toothpaste, we're taping our mouth, we're visiting our dentist every two to three months for cleanings if we're trying to remineralize, that really, really helps. Mm. That's really powerful to know because a lot of people go, oh, I have a cavity, now I have to go get it filled. Maybe going to those five pillars and uh, putting them into practice and doing the hydroxyapatite ha hack with the mouth tape and putting it in there, seeing if that helps before it gets deeper. Yes. Um, when you were talking about these five pillars, I thought to myself, how much dental trauma I had growing up. Yeah. And I told you, every year I was getting my teeth filled, I, w I, re I remember clearly my body, like the tension of my hands holding the dental chair yeah. and my shoulders <laughs> being really high. And then like just waiting for that really sharp pain in my body to move. Uh, I've had some bad experiences with dentists, like one held me down and it was like, my mom walked me right out of there. It was crazy, <laughs> it was so dramatic. But um, what role does that play? Well, we don't talk a lot about the psychological component of going to the dentist and our experiences. How does it, how is, can it be a detriment to our oral health? Such a great question. Most of my adult patients who are phobic, severely phobic, have all had childhood experiences similar to yours and maybe even worse. I had a patient six months ago, she couldn't even sit in the dental chair. So I kind of, I'm like, and you sit in the doctor's chair, I'm gonna sit in the dental chair. That's pretty much what we did for two visits until she felt more comfortable and then she was able to sit. And she was a sedation case, so mm -hmm. it, we wouldn't have been able to do all the work that we did on her because it was 20 years of neglect. Mm -hmm. That leads to neglect, trauma leads to neglect. So it's really important for the dentist to be mindful of that trauma and to treat the trauma as part of the treatment. It's not just filling a tooth. The mind of this patient is, is traumatized, mm -hmm. it's like PTSD walking in and seeing all the, the dental chairs and the equipment. So we need to be really mindful of that. And mm -hmm. we need to see how can we prevent that from happening? And that's why I love working with kids and interacting with them, you know, without a gown and a mask and mm -hmm. getting down to their level and reading to them a book, Dr. Seuss and their teeth and just breaking that intimidation and that fear that can be passed on generationally. and. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so working with kids yeah. and taking your time with tra traumatized patient. You can't rush dentistry. If, and unfortunately, a lot of strip mall dentist, dentistry areas, uh, the offices, sorry, mm -hmm. areas, a lot of strip mall offices, rush dentistry, that creates a lot more trauma. That sounds it, like every dentist I went to. Unfortunately, It was rushed, it was traumatic, yeah. it was just not, it didn't feel good. Yes. It's like I had such a phobia. I actually dreaded it. Yeah. It's funny because <laughs> I found uh, these childhood home videos uh, and I actually put them all into a like hard drive mm -hmm. and then I watched them on my computer. I haven't watched them since years and I saw one from 1991 and I'm dancing and you hear me talk about, I point to my mom, I go, this woman wants to take out all my teeth. <laughs> I'm assuming I just went to a dental Dennis. appointment and they said they have to remove my teeth. And you can see like it's, it's on my mind even when I'm dancing and like being a kid. And it was driven by that. It was, it was, really, it was really powerful. What is then your take on these antibacterial mouthwashes that everyone's using? Um, I remember when I was in college, I'd go out and like, ready to go out for the night, and I go, ooh, let me just do some Listerine, and, and then I go, yeah, now my breath is beautiful <laughs> and, 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 and smells like you know essential oil uh, peppermint for the rest of the night. 
How do you feel about those antibacterial mouthwashes? I strongly dislike mouthwash, most mouthwashes, especially if it has alcohol in it. It's messing up your microbiome. It's drying out your mouth. The al and uh, it's been associated with increased risks of oral cancer. Because imagine alcohol, day in, day out, your mouth. You're rinsing, you're rinsing. And when you mess up your microbiome, just like your gut, as I'm sure, you know, everyone knows, we all talk about gut microbiome, but a portion of your gut microbiome comes from your mouth. Mm -hmm. And you're using this mouthwash that is destroying your oral microbiome, and you're getting more cavities and more gum disease and less nitric oxide production. It's actually been associated, I just read an article a few months ago, it's been associated with increased high blood pressure. Mm. These these mouthwashes, especially the alcohol uh, mouthwashes. So, if you need to mouthwash, there are milder forms. Like Risewell does have yeah. a nice mouthwash. It's too pepperminty for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like the pepper, me personally. But baking soda water is great. Salt water is great. Like, let's get down to basics. It's just we have it in our pantry. One teaspoon of salt or baking soda with water if you'll be a little more. I, I, I ozonate my water <laughs> before I mix mm. it, and that's, that's my mouth rinse. It's so much more important to think about what you're putting in your, uh, if you are doing these mouthwashes and you're addicted to, like my husband, he still buys Listerine. I'm doing all this work and he still buys Listerine. Oh, it's gotta be so frustrating it's to so see It's so frustrating to see, I just wanna like, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do a reel, just dumping right, this. Right, right. And then your husband walking yeah, in through exactly. the door watching you. <laughs> but he, I love him, and I need to hold space for him. And one of these, so these, the, these are excellent marketing companies, the Listerine, and that freshness right. that they. And 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 when you watch the commercials, the Listerine is going in between your teeth and it's scrubbing your teeth mm. and it's doing so much for your teeth. And that that's powerful marketing, powerful yeah. advertisement. So. Um, what I recommend, focus on what you're eating. Prebiotics, through my diet, tons of garlic, sauerkraut. There's a list of foods that I send to patients all the time, prebiotic foods. Take an excellent probiotic so that you can, you need a prebiotic to clean out your mouth in a proper way and a probiotic to put the good bacteria mm. in your mouth so that they can, so your mouth can be thriving and so can your gut. You cannot have a healthy gut if your microbiome is off in your mouth, and if you're using these mouthwashes, it's throwing off your microbiome. Very powerful statement you said. You cannot have a healthy gut without having a healthy oral microbiome. Yeah. Uh, people don't think about that. Yeah. Even, even we'll sit here with functional doctors and they'll go, here are all the things you need to do for your gut, and here's the microscope, and who the heck is mentioning, oh yeah, this is connected, your oral, to your gut. So it's hard to overstate how important magnesium is for all the aspects of our health. There's a long list of symptoms and diseases that can be treated with magnesium. Doctors use magnesium for all types of conditions, from arrhythmia to constipation, to preeclampsia, to even seizures. And it's super necessary for our health and overall well-being. Now, there's a huge problem because a lot of us out there are magnesium deficient. You can increase your risk of all diseases if you're magnesium deficient. So it's really, really important that we're all getting a good amount of magnesium through our diet and even supplementation. So fortunately, BioOptimizers has a solution. It is one of the best magnesiums out there, one of the few ones that I take. Their magnesium breakthrough supplement is the only one in the market with all seven types of magnesium. And it's specially formulated to reach every tissue in your body and provide maximum health benefits for reducing stress, improving sleep, and really just boosting your overall energy levels. So right now, Healthless Health listeners, you can try BioOptimizers Magnesium Breakthrough and any other BioOptimizers product for 10% off. Just go to magbreakthrough.com slash DRG. That's M-A-G-B-R-E-A-K-T-H-R-O-U-G-H dot com slash DRG and use their code DRG10 to boost your intake of magnesium and really just start feeling better. What about those indolent infections then? The ones that are behind the scenes, do, can, are, are there a lot of people living with infections in their gums? And how is it affecting their overall health? Lots, periodontal disease. Um, and it's been linked to increased Alzheimer's, increased heart attacks for pregnancy and, and pregnant women, uh, increased risk of premature labor and lower birth weights. Mm. 
and we're connected. Our, the, uh, the, the bacteria from these infections are traveling to the rest of our body. They found periodontal disease causing bacteria in, in autopsies after heart attacks and strokes. Wow. So it's got to be an integral part of care. It's not just oral health. It's overall health. It has to be a part of it. And we work with a lot of patients from CEDARS, like transplant patients, um, lung transplant patients, kidney transplant patients. Before the transplant occurs, they want a clearance from a dentist. Why do we want that clearance when you need a transplant? Why don't we also emphasize, like every single medical doctor should be talking about dental and oral health to their mm -hmm. patients, especially gynecologists, internal medicine doctors. It's so, and taking a look inside, just seeing, is, is, do you have, mm -hmm. if, you know, at your yearly checkup, oh, you need to go visit your dentist, because it's really obvious when somebody has periodontal disease and these infections in their mouth. Just take a look at their gums and it's like flaming red. Mm. Mouth breathing, mouth breathers have severe infections because mm. they're dry. So when you're dry, the bad bacteria thrive. Yes. They just have a ball. It's like a raven there. So <laughs> just having a great time. I'm just I'm hearing techno music as we zoom into the exactly. mouth. Slower and slower, right into <laughs> the gum. And then, yeah, and then they're just having a whole yeah. strobe light fest. But uh, it makes sense. So if someone is brushing their teeth and bleeding, do they have periodontal disease? They have gum disease. They have gingivitis. They have gingivitis. Periodontal disease, we need to take x-rays to see the levels of bone levels. So take a step back. So gingivitis is infection in your gum. Periodontitis is infection in your bone. So it's when the gingivitis has gone unchecked for a few years, or if it's aggressive, a few months, and it goes to your bones and literally your bones start melting away. Mm. So... That's why when you catch it early, that's why when you're pregnant, you need to get your cleanings often because your risk of severe gingivitis increases dramatically because of all the hormonal impacts. Um, when you have that in check, your risk of periodontitis goes down significantly. Mm. And if one was to have gingivitis, can, can we address that through just interventions or does it need to be like a deep cleaning? Depends how severe it is. Such a great question. Depends how severe it is. So around each one of our teeth, there's gums holes. So you have a periodontal ligament, and then we see the gums around each mm -hmm. teeth. When the gums are really inflamed, sometimes it's really difficult to get down and clean around the inflammation. It's very painful. My patients won't like me very <laughs> much if I don't numb them. So if they're severely inflamed, yeah, sometimes we need to do a deep cleaning. But after a deep cleaning, I bring back patients every three months. This whole every six months cleaning, yeah. false myth, that's got to stop. Insurance companies created that, not medicine, not mm. dentistry. If you're coming back every three to four months for your cleanings, you're able to keep gingivitis in check, mm. especially as you're going through transitions in your body. Like if you're in the hospital, God forbid, and you're sick, you're not going to be taking great care of your mouth. It's just you have other priorities, but then that can flare up real quick. So people who have chronic illnesses, pregnant women with more prone to severe gingivitis, autoimmune diseases, yeah. trauma and stress, the more you visit your dentist, the less likely you're going to have irreversible disease. Mm. That, that just tells me, man, I got to get back to the dentist. It's been about a year and I got I need to go and I'm going to come to you uh, yes, this time. Yes. I'm leaving. I'm driving away yes. from wherever I was going and I'm coming to you. It's because um, it's, I, I agree. It's very important to keep check of your oral health, especially if you have any other risk factors. Exactly. Right. Or especially if you're just prone to mouth breathing or something. We, I was reading uh, Breathe, James, Nef James Nestor. Oh my God. Such and there was a part that say that some tribes believe that Breathing through the mouth, you're breathing in like demons, right? Like like bad spirits, bad entities. Yeah. The moment I heard that, I closed my mouth <laughs> and I was like, "Ain't no demons coming into my body, no, right?" No, no. <laughs> because we're just keeping and and but it actually keeps me remembering to close my mouth during the day. Yeah. Because I think that I grew up with my mouth breathing, right? I had um, I had a lot of oral health issues. I had uh, orthodontic issues. I told you that we had two, four, six, eight, eight of my teeth came out. Uh, oh. But just my teeth were too big for my jaw and jaw. face. Yeah. So um, thank God I caught up to each other a little bit at least. <laughs> but um, I, I, I know how many people, and I see it now, sometimes I'll look and I'll be like, that person's mouth breathing right there. They're on the computer, mouth breathing. Yeah. You know, I kind of like want to tiptoe to them and just tap up tap their chin up. a little bit and just <laughs> yeah, watch the mouth breathing. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned some of the foods. Uh, is, is there any other things that we can take orally or you recommend orally to patients to have a better oral microbiome? Yes. Um, Food-wise. Food-wise or supplements? Both. Both. 
Food-wise, liver is amazing. Mm. We do chicken liver, liver every single week with wow. my kids. Um, spice it up. Ideally, raw, but I can't do raw. I know some people can. I see it on Instagram. There's a you bunch of people do it. You know? it. Uh, my mom can. Like, it, we, I grew up like, uh, in, uh, where I'm Lebanese, and mm. they, you know, we'd get fresh liver in the summers when I'd be visiting Lebanon, and I'd remember my mom. She has it with her fresh mint from the garden and salt and pepper, and she'd eat the liver, and wow. it's, it's it's just part of our diet. Um, broth, call any collagen filled food. So organ meats are the best. A lot of cultures, like, I mean, they also eat brain and mm. <laughs> it's just not very common here. But that's how we grew up. I saw my grandpa eating like sheep brain and all that. Wow. But organ meats are great. They can have them in supplementation form because I know it disgusts a lot of people. It's hard for me to handle it, but um, I cook it. I cook it with a lot of spice and then I put uh, lemon on it and I make like little sandwiches for my kids and they love it. It's like one of their favorite foods. Mm. So they don't know what they're eating, but they know that they love it. It's, you just don't need, to, you don't need to know. But I actually have a recipe, I think, on my Instagram of what mm. I do. But broth, broth is incredible. It's just so healing. Um, Grass-fed meat is really good. It has a lot of vitamins. Then get out in the sun, get some natural vitamin D3. Almost every single person with a cavity, there was a study that came out, every single child with a dental cavity is vitamin D deficient. If you have a cavity in your teeth, you have to think, what's going on in my bones? What I love about the mouth is it's a reflection of the body. I see your stresses, I see your, your, your risk factors, I see what's your inflammation. And that's why dentists a lot of time can be the first people that catch some issues mm -hmm. in, 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 your, in your body. So I take that really seriously when I see a cavity. It's easy to fill a cavity. You can teach a monkey to, to fill a cavity. Mm -hmm. But why did you get that cavity? And how can we prevent that cavity from occurring ever again? Mm. That is my thing. So supplementation, magnesium, vitamin A, D3, K2. We need K2 to uptake calcium into our bones and our teeth. So you hear calcium, calcium, calcium. I don't know. I grew up like, you have to get your calcium. Right. Drink milk for right. your calcium. Right. You just talk, talk, everybody's talking about calcium, but there's some people with a ton of calcium going on. It's, it's increasing the risk of heart attacks mm -hmm. in the calcium. So they need K2. They need K2 and D3 to uptake that calcium and input it into your bone and your teeth. Mm. I've never been a fan of calcium supplementation. Neither. I, w women would come into, I, when I was younger, I worked at this pharmacy where they had supplements and women would come, older women on the senior yeah. day, and they go, uh, hello, uh, sir, can, can you direct me to the calcium, please? And I'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. And then right when we get to it, I'm like, you sure you want to take calcium? My doctor said I have to take it. Yeah. I said, well, maybe you should be taking uh, this. And I bring them the vitamin D and K, K2. And just, just to show them, like, this one is a mix of both. And maybe you talk to your doctor, check your vitamin D levels, because calcium, especially in the context of breast cancer, you don't want to be supplementing calcium uh, or heart attack. So yeah. uh, for all people listening, I, I, I truly don't believe people should be supplementing calcium. I fully agree. Yeah, fully and, agree. and if you are, get in the sun, yeah. right? We need to be in the sun. We, we are not in the sun at all. We are grossly, uh, under. we undervalue grossly the sun and the effects and the positive effects on yeah. us. So yeah. we got to get out there wherever we are in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, have, I, I think about oral health and the connection between our whole body and I always have so many questions, like, what's the best toothpaste, right? How often should we floss? Like, is there anything that you want to talk about that is really important to you in the context of the work that you're doing? Because uh, I, I think I've, I've asked everything that was in my head right now about teeth, 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 oral health, oral microbiome. <laughs> Thank you. I think, I think flossing and brushing is overrated, and everything else is so underrated. Mm. Um, it's really important for everybody watching this to not only think brush, floss, brush, floss. Of course, brushing and flossing is very important. Very important. You need to floss daily. Um, and people who are remineralizing a couple times in the same session, um, you need to floss and brush in the morning. Mostly f brush, but even floss. And a lot of people ask me, do I need to brush in the morning? Because I fasted, like I, you know. Mm -hmm. So you're not brushing to remove only the food, but it's to break the, pla the biofilm that develops on our, on our teeth and in our mouth as, as we sleep. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really important to 
to sum a lot of what we spoke about up, we want to control the pH in our mouth and balance the acidity in our mouth. It's, we're in constant remineralization and demineralization. And when things get off check, we have more demineralization than we have disease, whether it's cavities and gum disease and just breakdown in the oral cavity. And that's telling you everything also about your body. You're having breakdown in your body mm -hmm. as well. So I just like to make it really generalized for people to really understand the whole body aspect of mm. dentistry. And that when you have proper remineralization, the balance tips over towards the remineralization with the n not mouth breathing, eating a proper diet, getting into the sun, uh, decreasing your stress levels. Um, that's easier said than done to decrease mm -hmm. your, but I've prioritized that in my life because I saw the impact that it had on my mouth and, and my own body when I was pregnant and through traumatic incidences mm. that I've had. So I think it's just so important to take brushing and flossing with a grain of salt, do it, it's really important, but having a great relationship with a dentist that really hears you out and listens not only to, to your needs, but advises in a way that's not, not intimidating. Like, talking to you. It's a conversation. I'm your guide. I'm not your, you know, your mm -hmm. doctor, your dentist. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really important with children and people who've had traumatic incidences. Mm. Beautiful. Beautifully said, because we are told brush floss, that's all you got to do. And you're going to have great oral health. Yeah. And, false. Yeah. And false. And like, <laughs> brush floss, but here's a list of all the things you need to be doing. Yeah. And um, as we value our oral health more, not coincidentally, we just get healthier overall yeah. because this <laughs> is the window to our overall health, as you said. Yeah. People viewing, people listening, they're going to go, man, I really resonate with this doctor. <laughs> Where can we find you? Um, I'm, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Lydia, D-R-L-E-E-D-I-A. Um, and yeah. And uh, all our office information is there. All the office information. And you practice out of where? Yeah, I practice in Beverly Hills okay. um, uh, with my brother. He's also, both of my brothers are dentists. I love it. Uh, yeah. it's, all, it's all in the family. It's a family affair, which I mean, it makes me feel so good. So like maternity leave, I got a proper one and he mm -hmm. took care of my patients and I just feel really good, you know, um, having someone I really trust to, in the office to work with. So yeah, we practice in Beverly Hills together and um, yeah, we have a, I, 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 we focus on both of us. He does a lot of the surgeries, uh, the, the, the zirconia implants, the mm -hmm, metal free implants, mm -hmm. and we didn't get into that, but we kind of go hand in hand in, in working. Um, what I do more, he doesn't, and what he does more, I don't. So you found the it, perfect balance. I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sure blessed. that happened when you were kids, <laughs> yes. and now it just manifests in the workplace. Yes. Yes. Um, what a pleasure having Thank uh, you. you and your expertise and and really just the way that you view in a holistic manner, overall oral health, but really just health in general. Thank you for talking about hormones. Thank you for giving us the ideas about what's the best toothpaste out there, what foods we should be eating. Oh my God, mouth breathing. Um, it's an honor, thank you. The honor is mine. Thank you, Dr. G. Thank you for viewing, listening, However you're consuming this show, I really appreciate you as always. And thank you for showing up. All the gratitude, all the love. Listen, rate, review, and subscribe to this show if you have not yet to support it, to help it grow, to get it to more people, to heal thyself, and to heal the world. I'll see you later. Bye.